And joining us now, Mick Mulvaney, President Trump's former chief of staff, who resigned this week as the administration's special envoy to Northern Ireland. Mick, after all of the controversial things that Donald Trump did over the last four years, why was this week the final straw? Why now say that you could no longer be part of his administration? Um, Chris, good morning. Thanks for having me. I, I think everybody recognizes that what happened on Wednesday is different. You could go down the long litany of things that people complained about with Donald Trump, and I could probably defend almost all of them. Many of them were policy uh, differences, uh, uh, differences. Many of them were stylistic differences. But Wednesday was different. Wednesday was existential. Wednesday is one of those things that struck to the very heart of what it means to be an American. And it was wrong. And I think it was important um, for those of us who used to be on the inner circle. I mean, look, you and I have been doing this for years. I, I came in in 2010 in the Tea Party. Um, I started the Freedom Caucus with Mark Meadows. Uh, I was in the cabinet. I was the chief of staff. I thought it was important for somebody who's not establishment, who's not a Trump, a, a never Trumper, to come out and say that that was wrong. It needs to be said again and again and again by as many people as possible. Should President Trump be removed from office in these final 10 days? If you were a member of the cabinet, would you vote to invoke the 25th Amendment? If you were still a member of Congress, would you vote to impeach? Yeah, I, I think the 25th Amendment is a very clumsy tool. We've never used it under these circumstances. We've typically used it when a, a president goes for a medical procedure. We don't really know how to do it, and it's slow. It's not unusual. We're talking about it. Again, this was such an extreme event on Wednesday. It's not surprising we're looking at extreme possible uh, reactions to what happened on Wednesday. Regarding impeachment, I think it depends. I, I, I know the Democrats are going to introduce uh, articles of impeachment on, on Monday. If it's just related to Wednesday, that's one thing. If it's it's the type of impeachment that just becomes a list of complaints of why they don't like Donald Trump. That's something else. Um, but I think it's different now than the impeachment was last year. Last year, the impeachment was a witch hunt. It was a political thing. They were looking for an excuse to impeach the president forever. Now it's different, and I think it will be looked at very differently by members of both the House and the Senate. So directly, if you were still a member of Congress and it was impeachment for incitement to violence, which is what this article of impeachment is, specifically over the events this last week, would you vote to impeach this president? Yeah, I don't think it's fair to sit here and say yes or no, but I would take it really, really seriously, Chris. And I'm not trying to dodge your question, but that's probably the most serious question you can ask any member of Congress. And to sort of give a flip answer based on a, you know, sitting here and talking about it, you want to sit down, you want to hear the arguments, want to parse out the speeches that the president made, that his, his son made, that Rudy Giuliani made, um, look at what actually happened that day, look at what happened during the day, what did the president say while it was going on, what did the president say afterwards. All of that would be evidence that needs to be taken into consideration. But I can assure you there will be members of both parties who would look at it very, very differently than they did um, last year in the, uh, in the previous impeachment. Mick, when you announced your resignation this week, you said that you felt, quote, embarrassment and shame. Do you feel any responsibility? You were chief of staff for more than a year. Do you feel any responsibility for enabling Donald Trump? Yeah, I feel a lot of emotions this week. I was, I was shocked. I was angered. I was sad. I was embarrassed. I, I was frustrated. Um, and I, I still am trying to figure out um, what I could have done differently. If anything, I've been out of the White House now for eight months. What I do know, Chris, is, is, is there are things that are different. When, when we saw the president, I wrote a piece in The Wall Street Journal six weeks ago saying that I thought the president would leave uh, in a presidential manner. I, I really did believe that at the time. The stories I told to back that up were were true. I've seen the president be presidential before, and I know that he has the ability to do it. He did it every single day. I don't know what's different, if it's different about him now, if it's different about his advisors. He used to love vigorous debate uh, from all sides of a particular issue. I don't know if he still has that in the White House. I don't know if he, now he's surrounded himself with people like Rudy Giuliani and Peter Navarro that simply tell him what he wants to hear and reaffirm exactly uh, what, he, what he, they think he wants them to say. That's a very dangerous position for any president to be. And I think the president, either he's different, the people around him are different, or both. But something is very different now um, than, uh, than we saw when I worked there uh, uh, eight, more than eight months ago. Mick, respectfully, there are people who say he isn't different. This is the Donald Trump you work for. General John Kelly, 
who was your predecessor as White House Chief of Staff, says he gave this advice to the president when he left in December of 2018. Take a look. I said, please don't hire a, a bootlicker or a yes man, because you will be impeached. And, I, and towards the end of my time there, all I ever heard from some of the real devotees in the White House was, you know, you got to let Trump be Trump, let Trump be Trump. Kelly says specifically that you and others didn't have the spine to tell the president no. Uh, it's, it's not true, uh, and I'm sorry to hear John say that. I'm not going to pick a fight with John Kelly. Um, the advice is good advice, not to surround yourself with yes men. Um, look, we saw the president be presidential. I, but I he remember says you were one of the yes men, Mick. No, that, well, he's just, he's, listen, John should know more than anyone else that what happens when the doors close in the Oval Office is not the stuff you see on TV. It's easy now, Chris, for people who, who don't like the president, who never liked the president, who always thought the president was a monster, wanted him to be that. People who saw him through the filter of the media to say, oh, look, we told you so. It was, we knew it was always going to be like this. But those of us who worked with him every single day knew that the exact opposite was true, knew that he was into the policy. He was excited about what we had done for the country. He, un unemployment was down. Um, we didn't have any new foreign wars. We had a lot of successes to point to, despite all of those sort of stylistic things that people like John Kelly just really didn't like. But we had those successes, and we were very proud of the work that we were doing, very proud of letting the president be the president because he was elected as the president. But again, all of that changed but, on but, Wednesday, and I don't know why. But, but again, Mick, it, it, you know, a lot of people say it didn't change on Wednesday. Kelly was right. The president was impeached when you were chief of staff for cutting off aid to Ukraine, allegedly, unless they dug up dirt on Joe Biden. And here you were at that time defending the president. Take a look. Just described is a quid pro quo. It is funding will not flow unless the investigation into the into the Democratic server uh, happened as well. We, we do we do that all the time with foreign policy. Whether the president should have been impeached or not, and I don't want to get into that argument. Why didn't you resign over that? Because I simply misspoke. Uh, and I've had that conversation with John Carl, who was the gentleman asking that question, who's a friend of mine many, many times. But it's actually a really good I'm, I'm example. I'm not talking about your statement, Mick. I'm talking, I'm talking about why not resign over what I'm, I know you don't think was a proper thing for the president to do, cut off aid to Ukraine. No, uh, no, and, no, and Chris. Link it no, no, to Chris. Digging up Chris. dirt on Joe Biden. No, no, no. But, but, but Chris, no, no. Wait a second. That original impeachment, and I don't realize we're going to get into this today, had absolutely nothing to do with anything that was actually wrong. It was the Democrats looking for an excuse, and they found one line in a transcript with Zelensky saying, do us a favor, that allowed them, gave them the political excuse they needed to do an impeachment. We all know, or at least many of us know and expect that that was, that was, a, that was an impeachment looking for an excuse. It was a political event. It was a show trial. And again, I don't want to get into this too heavily today, but that has nothing to do with what we're okay. doing today. The reason I didn't, the reason I didn't resign uh, back right. then is the president did nothing wrong. The president did nothing wrong back then. Well, okay, let me Something ask you about... Let me ask you about some other things. You were a top member of the administration when the president defended the white supremacists at Charlottesville. You were a top member of the administration, not chief of staff, when the Trump administration separated parents coming across the border from their children. Why not resign over those? The, 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 I remember the kids in cages thing, which, of course, which a lot of folks gave a lot of attention to, and we've seemed to have forgotten, including you, Chris, that those pictures, many of the pictures of the kids in cages were taken during the Obama administration. They were Obama uh, cages. Yeah, nothing, we simply, nothing, we were, nothing like with the policy under Donald Trump. Chris, these are policy differences, okay? These are things that you think the country should look one way, we think it should look another. These are differences of style, the way the president speaks. Did he misspeak at, at Charlottesville? Yes. Should he have corrected it? Yes. Did he handle it poorly? Yes. But it was not something that people resign over. If you talk for a living, as you and I do, you're going to misspeak from time to time. It's inevitable. Those are not the type of things that give rise to resignations. In fact, I don't think anybody, including John Kelly, resigned. 
resigned during any of those things. As I recall, John Kelly got fired and didn't resign. Wednesday was different. And I hope that we focus on why Wednesday was different than something about a policy over immigration or a policy on how to handle this or that. This is different, and I think it's important that people recognize the differentiations between differences over policy and what happened on Wednesday. Finally, uh, on November 7th, you pointed this out, and I want to I want to ask you specifically about it. On November 7th, four days after the election, as you point out, you wrote an article for the Wall Street Journal. I want to put some of it up. You said the U.S. needs to know that the winner is actually the winner, and once Americans know that, I have every expectation that Mr. Mm -hmm. Trump will be, act, and speak like a great president should, win or lose, Mick. How could someone who worked with the president so closely for three years be so wrong about who Donald Trump was? Yeah, clearly something is different now than it was when he saw it. I wrote that article for a reason, because I had seen the examples. And if you go read the piece, I give a couple of examples. I've never told this one. There's another example uh, that I've never talked about publicly, which is that during the impeachment, um, the president um, tweeted something during the testimony, and there was concern that it might rise to the level of, of, uh, of tampering with witnesses. I, I know a little bit about the law. I practiced law a long time ago. It wasn't that. But I was worried about the political impact of that. So I went to the president privately said, Mr. President, this is going to be a political problem. We need to fix this. He looked at me and said, OK, brought the lawyers down, talked to them, picked up the phone, called Kevin McCarthy, brought Ivanka in, talked to them, talked to some of his friends in New York, got a bunch of different opinions, and then fixed it, reversed course, and did the right thing. That was the president that we saw time and again. You saw him through the media. You saw him in the light that you wanted to see him. We saw the real President Trump, who had that ability to pivot when he knew something had gone off the rails. That did didn't happen on Wednesday. It hasn't happened much since the election. Uh, and that's what I think the difference is. And that's why I got that piece so wrong six weeks ago. Mick, thank you. Thanks for your time. Always good to talk with you, sir. Thanks, Chris.